Hello guys, welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to tell you how to transform this kind of a point dataset which indicates the traffic accidents which happen in a particular year into a heat map which looks like this so that you'll be very easily able to do certain interpretations of the of the point dataset to make uh, relevant decisions. We will be using QGIS in order to do this and the method that we are going to employ in order to develop this kind of a heat map from a point dataset is the method of kernel density estimation. So without further ado, let's go ahead into the tutorial and see how we can do this. So the required data for this exercise, I'm going to be downloading them from Kaggle.com. In case if you do not have a Kaggle account, you can simply just log in and create an account and after that you'll be able to access thousands of different datasets just like this. So I have actually gotten this by simply searching traffic accidents and uh, the dataset which I am going to be using is this Barcelona Accidents. I'll put this link uh, down in the description in case if you would like to directly find it. And when you scroll down over here, you can see that what sort of uh, columns we can see. Now, this dataset is a list of people who have been involved in an accident in the city of Barcelona, Spain from year 2010 up to 2016. And the data is managed by the police in the city of uh, Barcelona. So over here you can see the different columns that we can actually find in this this data set but out of this different information the three columns which I'm going to be most interested in is this UTM coordinate Y the UTM coordinate X as well as this type of injury now the language they use is uh, Catalan the whole data set is basically divided into three different types of uh, accidents uh, slightly wounded seriously injured or death so if you scroll down over here, you can actually see the, the real data set. You can check the different columns from here. And over here, you can actually get the data set for different years, starting from 2010 up to 2016. So what I'm going to do is actually just for the demonstration purpose, I'm going to only download the data set of 2010. So I can simply just go over here and download. And I'm going to save this file. All right, now over here, you can see that I have already extracted the zip file. And inside the zip file, you can find this 2010 accidents CSV file. And if you're using a software like Microsoft Excel, you can simply open the file like this. And over here, you can actually see quite a few columns. But, but as I told you guys, the columns, the three columns, which I'm going to be mostly interested in is these three columns. So my plan is basically to use this UTM coordinates to import each and every point. Now over here, you, you can see that we have quite a number of uh, cases, about 10,805 cases of accidents just in just alone in uh, 2010. So I'm going to actually import all of these in the form of points into QGIS. However, over here you might have noticed that the decimal point is actually a comma over here. Now this is quite normal in certain countries that they, instead of using the decimal point, they actually use a comma. But if the settings of your PC is configured in a way that the decimal is specified by a point instead of a comma, what you can do is simply you can select everything and press Control F. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a simple, simple uh, find and replace. So I'm going to find the commas and I'm going to replace them by a decimal point. And I'm going to say replace all like this. And you can see that after I do that, Excel actually recognizes this to be a number like this so that it got indented to the right side. And uh, this is the other column which I'll be interested in. So you can see over here that this Farid year in Catalan basically means slightly wounded. And over here you see that certain cases have Ferit Greo, which means seriously injured. And if you scroll down, you may also find cases like this where the accident actually resulted in, in a death. So later on, I'll explain to you guys how I'm going to actually use this information in order to uh, develop our heat map. But for the time being, let's save this as a CSV. And we can just go ahead and open up QGIS. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add this data using this open data source manager. And from here, I'm going to specify delimited text. And from here, I can actually browse into that CSV file just like this. And I can simply double click over here. And you can see that the sample data is actually displayed over here. 
So the file format is basically a CSV. So you can retain this to be like that. And when you come to this geometry definition, just make sure that you have selected X field to be this coordinate X field and the Y field to be the Y field correspondingly like this. And one important thing is the coordinate reference system. This might vary depending on the types of data that you get and also the different sources where the data actually come from. Now in this case, since this data belongs to Spain, Barcelona specifically, and also as you can see over here, it's not in a geographic coordinate system, but it's in a projected coordinate system as you can see over here. So that means you have to make sure that you actually select the correct projected coordinate system over here. Now, if you're not so sure, one way of quickly getting to know what sort of a projected coordinate system you need to use is simply by using Google Earth. Now, what you can do is first open up Google Earth. And we do know our city is Barcelona in Spain. So I'm going to simply search for that. And now when I zoom into, let's say, some places of Barcelona, and also you can go to Tools first and go to Options. And from here, especially if you are looking for the corresponding UTM, you can actually select this and click apply. And when I hover my mouse over here, you can see at this point, you can see the corresponding UTM zone. Now over here, it says 31T. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over here and open the CRS selector. And from here, I'm just going to type 31T. And for this case, I'm actually already aware of the fact that the corresponding coordinate system is this one. You can see that even even the Barcelona, even Barcelona of Spain actually falls within these boundaries. So I'm going to select this particular coordinate system. And once you have done that, you can simply press add. And close this. And now you can see that a layer got added into our layers panel. Now what I can do is I can actually zoom into this and now I feel like it would be good to have a base map of some kind. Now, of course, if you have installed these quick map services, I guess in some of our previous tutorials, I already showed you guys how to install these quick, quick map services. So once you have installed that, you can actually go to OSM and you can add a standard open straight map. And since you already selected the coordinate reference system of this particular layer to be the corresponding UTM31 coordinate reference system, you can see that the coordinate reference system of our data frame has already been changed to be the corresponding correct coordinate system. Now you can see that the data is actually placed properly in Barcelona. So these are the locations where the accidents have been reported. Now, if you would like to get the information of each point, what you can do is you can simply go to this identify features tool. And if you were to select one of the points like this, you can get the information over here. And from here, you can see that the type of injury which resulted due to the accident which happened over here is basically a slightly wounded type of a case. So just like that, you can even get the other type of information as well. And if I were to open this layer, the attributes table of this layer, you can see that everything that we saw in that CSV file in Microsoft Excel is basically, has basically been imported into QGIS now. So that's quite handy, isn't it? Now, in case if you would like to export this layer as a separate shape file, you can simply right click over here and go to export and save features as. And from here, you can select what sort of a format you would like to save this file in. I'm going to select S3 shape file and the file name is going to be traffic accidents, Barcelona. And I'm going to get rid of this, this layer, which I added. All right. So now based on this data, our objective is actually to create a heat map so that we can sort of get an idea where the most crucial areas in terms of the possibility for accidents to happen, especially traffic accidents to happen based on these historical records that we have over here. So it's quite simple. Actually, we can just right click over here, go to properties. And from here under symbology, instead of using single symbol, you actually have this option called heat map already built into this. Now, if I press apply without making any changes to these settings, Let's see what kind of a thing we get. Yeah, you can see that actually we got sort of a heat map, but still the there are a few things that we need to sort of uh, configure before we create this. Now, the first thing is I would like to change the color ramp to be reds and the radius. I'm going to actually check the radius based on the map units. Now, since we are us using UTM, 
the map units are going to be in meters and I'm going to set the radius of influence of each point to be about let's say 350. So what this radius basically refers to is actually it's the it's the radius of influence from each point to a certain distance from the origin of the point or, so, or from the center of that point. So I'm going to, to get started I'm going to actually set a value of about 350 and for the time being I'm, I'm just going to leave it at that and press apply. I can go to this layer rendering option and I can actually decrease the opacity a little bit so that we will be able to see the open straight map from behind. Now you can see that if I change the radius to be only about let's say 50 meters you can see now the radius of influence is actually sort of shrinked around those particular points but if you would like to increase this around let's say 350 you can clearly see that now we can actually make sound judgments based on this heat map quite possibly this area especially the junctions over here and particularly this region is actually quite susceptible to traffic accidents when we just look at the overall heat map just like this and one interesting thing is that when you zoom in you can see that the representation of the heat map actually changes accordingly so the more you zoom in you can get a much clearer view of the road network and even the particular junction where and even the particular point on the street where this heat map indicates to be the most risky point in terms of the possibility for for traffic accidents to occur now when we look at the heat map just like this the heat map is generated basically based on the density of the points but in certain cases it might be much more meaningful to actually assign a certain weightage depending on a particular characteristic of a point now in this case as as i mentioned to you guys before if i were to open this attributes table you can see that each point represents whether the accident was just a simple accident or whether it, it was an accident which caused a serious injury or whether it was an accident which actually caused a death. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to provide weightages based on this particular criteria. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say if the particular accident resulted in a death I'm going to assign a very high value to that because that high value basically represents that that particular point is quite a risky place. This is just one of the ways of giving the importance to each, each of these points and if the point if the accident actually was just a simple accident I'm going to give it a very low weightage and after that I'm going to regenerate a heat map based on that given weightage. So first before doing anything what we can do is we can actually first create a new column and assign weights just like the way that I explained to you guys. So in QGIS if you would like to create a new column what you can do is you can simply go to open field calculator and from here you can select create a new field. And I'm going to name this field as weight. Now we are going to assign the weights simply by using a conditional statement. So the conditional statement will be something like if the resulting injury was just a simple injury I would like to assign a weight of 1. But if the resulting injury was a serious injury I'm going to assign a weight of 50. But if the resulting injury actually led to a death I'm going to assign a weight of 100. So that's actually how I'm going to assign my conditional statements. Now in QGIS, it's quite easy to actually assign the conditional statements. You can simply say case. Over here, if I specify the double quotes, I can point towards a column heading like this. Now over here, you can see that the type of injury is specified under this descript underscore six column. So I'm going to start typing that column heading and you can see that actually it prompts us the types of column headings which matches our first couple of uh, letters. So I'm going to select this 6 over here which actually corresponds to this particular column and I can say if that value is equal to now I'm going to open single quotes and say Farid Yeo just make sure that you actually type the spellings exactly in the same way that you can see over here. If that's the case then there will be a value of 1. I'm going to simply copy this and paste it over here but but if the value of the descript 6 is grave then the value is going to be 50 and our third condition is that if the value of this is going to be equal to mort that means death the value is going to be 100. So basically this value specifies the seriousness of the of the of the of the accident and we can specify else if the case is none of this then just put a value of zero because over here I'm 
quite confident that every point belongs to either of these three cases. So I'm just going to specify a value of zero for the cases which, which are other than these three. And finally, I'm going to end this conditional statement simply by typing end. All right. Now when I press OK, it might take a while. And now if I scroll to the right side, you can see that for the cases of Farid here over here, which means the exit, which means the injury, which is not so serious, you can see that the weight is one. And in this case, whenever we have Farid grave, which means a serious accident, you can see that the value is 50. And when we have Mort, if the script worked perfectly, you can see that the value, the, the weight has been changed to 100 over here. All right, that's it. And now we can again go back to these properties of this layer. And now we can say that assign the weight of the points by this weight attribute that we just specified. And after that, you can hit enter. You can see that now the heat map changed accordingly. So now the weights have been applied. So from here, you can very clearly see that these particular areas are the areas which are actually quite dangerous in terms of not only just for accidents to happen, but for serious accidents to happen where the historical data proves that these areas have resulted in much more deaths compared to the other areas. And from here, you can get a much clearer picture. All right, I guess the tutorial was clear for you guys. Now you might be able to do this with different types of data sets. Depending on your individual case, the way how the map is going to look will be different, of course. But generally, you are actually able to apply the same concept in order to generate different heat maps for different cases. And this is not only applicable for traffic incidents. This can be various other things like, uh, let's say, if you would like to represent some sort of a density like population density, stuff like that. And also you can use this kind of heat maps to visualize crime data quite easily. It's actually, a, it's actually one of the most common applications of heat maps to very easily grasp which areas are more prone to, towards crimes based on the historical data and based on the density of the of the points. I guess that's about it for this tutorial. If you do have any questions regarding this tutorial, don't forget to comment them down below. And of course, if you did like the tutorial, we really appreciate if you just hit that like button and that actually helps us to increase the reach of this tutorial to, to a wider audience. And of course, if you do like to see more tutorials like this, I also encourage you guys to uh, subscribe to our channel as well. So thanks a lot for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one.